Hi everyone, Darren here, and today's episode is going to be about this 25D Lucas distributor that uh, was removed from a running car. Um, I say running because it was running very poorly and I simply could not tune it uh, the way I wanted to. So I pulled it out and replaced it with a new PowerSpark unit and um, thought that I would showcase this one in an episode so that everyone can understand when and why a distributor is actually worn out. Um, so stay with me while I showcase the various aspects of this one that uh, are bad. The first major problem is it doesn't have a vacuum module. I don't know where it is, I don't know why it's missing, but it was not attached to this distributor at the time, so the customer did not have any vacuum advance. Uh, secondly, I noticed that the capacitor was not secured. Um, it might have just rattled loose, I don't know, but it did not have a solid ground, so that's not great. I also noticed that uh, the wiring here had lost its insulation, was basically just bare and crumbling. Uh, there's a lot of light grease sprayed throughout here. Um, but the biggest problem that this thing has is that the, uh, the shaft itself is extremely worn. Um, I'm going to get a dial indicator on here to showcase this, but basically this amount of slop was causing the dwell angle to actually change as you revved it, more so than you'd expect to see on a normal uh, point space system. So um, this was basically the reason why I changed it out. That and the fact that it's missing parts and it just wasn't operating properly. Also, uh, I noticed that the breaker plate doesn't move. Um, it's it's some it's stuck. I don't know why it's stuck, but even if this car had a vacuum module attached, it would not operate this breaker plate. So I'm going to take apart the uh, top half of this distributor and see what's going on. Also, I'm going to measure this uh, wear and tear and try and show how much change was going on with the uh, dwell angle uh, because of the wear and tear in here. For those of you who are unaware of what dwell angle is, it's a period of time that the coil uh, requires to charge up between uh, spark events. And it happens between the points on the lobe on this cam here. And essentially it's the time between the opening of the points here and the opening of the points down here. So I'm going to measure that um, while pushing on the shaft to show how much uh, the dwell angle could change, and um, it's actually quite dramatic. Alright, what I have here is my multimeter hooked up to the points, and it's going to make a noise when they're open versus closed, so we'll be able to check the dwell angle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the rotor this way, and then we're going to check the dwell, and then I'm going to push it that way, and we're going to check the dwell, and we're going to compare the two numbers to each other. Um, so I'm actually going to hold it slightly in a clockwise rotation so that none of the advanced mechanism is operating. And I'm just going to rotate the body to simulate actual rotation itself. One twenty nine. Okay, and then we'll give it again. So this time I'm going to push it to my right while holding it in a clockwise rotation. Eighty one. One twenty nine. Alrighty, comparing the numbers, 
we see that in one way we had 55 degrees of dwell, in the other way we had 48 degrees of dwell. That's a 7 degree variation just because of the shaft wear. Um, not only does this fluctuate the coil power, but that amount of slop is actually measurable with the timing light on the crankshaft. I also wanted to measure the actual shaft play to compare a good one versus an old one. This one has more than ten thousands of play. Terrible. The next part of this distributor that I want to check on is why the breaker plate seems to be stuck. So if we get this unit out of here. Aha. Someone has welded this closed, either due to issues with the vacuum module or perhaps this was being used for racing. I don't know, but someone has welded this shut. Um, not great. Also, uh, we we're going to check this cam like we did on the last video and see how many degrees of advance it's providing. Uh, it certainly looks like there's some wear and tear on the tip, so it'll be interesting to see how many degrees this is actually providing versus how many it was supposed to be. Um, so I'll get my little degree wheel hooked up and we'll check that as well. But uh, I'm actually going to remove this uh, central shaft out of the housing to measure everything else from now on. With the pointer hooked up to the distributor, I will now check its overall advance. Looks like 13 degrees. So roughly 3 degrees has worn off of the cam mechanism itself. 3 degrees of advance on the cam here equates to 6 degrees of crankshaft advance. After placing this distributor shaft into my distributor machine, I was able to check the advance at various RPM points, and according to the book, this distributor was supposed to provide 10 degrees at 1200 RPMs, this is a distributor speed, 6 degrees at 600 RPMs, 1 degree at 350, and then 0 at 225. So um, when I put this one in, we of course saw the three additional degrees of advance from the wear. Uh, I noted 12.5 12, 12 was the actual measurement at 1200 RPMs distributor. Uh, we had an additional two at 600 and then um, below that five degrees uh, the springs did not fully retract the weights so this distributor stayed permanently five degrees advanced uh, below 350-400 RPMs. So at a minimum if I was to recurve this unit, I would have to replace the primary spring with something strong enough to actually retract the weights back down to zero um, and see what the curve provides. Additionally, I'd have to remove the two and a half to three degrees of additional advance in order to return to factory specifications. One of my ask, why does it matter to check the advance curve versus what the book says? What's a few degrees? Well, remember that 10 degrees of distributor advance is actually 20 degrees crankshaft advance. So 12.5 or 13 would be 26 degrees of advance. So at idle, uh, 350 distributor degrees or 750 to 800 RPMs, you had approximately 2 degrees of advance. And in actuality, you were actually had 10 degrees of advance. So if let's say the total timing for this vehicle was supposed to be in the 30 degree range. Uh, originally, 10 times 2 is 20, plus an additional 10 degrees given as a static advance would give you 30 degrees total. Uh, 2 plus 10 is 12, so you'd have 12 degrees static. Now, if you had just left it there with the additional 10 degrees at idle, but it wore out to the specifications, you would actually have 15 degrees at idle, and you'd have 31 at high RPM. 
I meant to say 35 at higher RPM. Uh, anyway, if you look down here, I've written out a scenario which showcases the problem of having too much advance from worn out cams. So originally, 10 degrees all in, plus the additional 10 degree static gives you 30 degrees total. If you have 12 and a half, you actually have 35 total. So five additional or you know, six additional, depending on this three degrees is really three degrees or two and a half. I can't quite tell given the accuracy of my equipment. But uh, anyway, um, if you put this in, assuming it was as good as the new one, and you reset your timing at idle to be the 12 degrees we originally mentioned earlier to give a total of 30, then what you'd end up with is 20 degrees, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 10 additional degrees, 20. You'd take off 12, so you're 8 degrees over. Subtract that from your 35, and realistically you end up with 27 degrees of total advance. So by setting this at idle, what you'd end up with is a retarded timing, even though you think you're actually timing it correctly. This is the problem of having distributors that are worn out and bad advance curves, is that if you go with the book settings at idle, you may end up not having correct advance timing at high RPM, which is why you should always check your timing at high RPM because of this situation that occurring here. Anyway, it doesn't matter because this distributor and body and all this stuff is just going to go into my parts bin, um, so hopefully some of it can be reused in some other distributor, but I will not be rebuilding this unit. Anyway, I hope that you liked what you saw. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment, and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Most likely it'll be another distributor because I have several more to go through and check. Uh, so anyway, so stay tuned.